why do I have a backlog? It's a simple question to ask someone who imposes a list of games to play. Most people would think you just play the games you want to play and stop if you don't want to play it anymore. The backlog isn't just a gaming exclusive phenomenon though. Your YouTube watch later, my list on Netflix, Amazon wishlist, all of these you can say are technically backlogs. I have the biggest case of FOMO. My family wasn't poor, but they certainly didn't have the money for weekly or monthly trips to the game store to buy some games I probably was going to trade in anyway. I had to work at a young age to get my games. I remember cutting grass and saving up to walk down to GameStop just to waste it on some bargain bin games that I would trade in after beating it. If I wasn't spending my money on those, I was spending it on game cards for whatever free to play MMO I was playing at the time. My childhood mainly consisted of playing these MMOs instead of console games because it was my escape as a kid. Before social media MMOs were my social media and chat rooms. I would log in and talk for hours with friends in the wilderness of these games. I had consoles, of course, but like everyone else, my Xbox broke and I never cared to repair it. All I had was my Wii to buy my time if I wanted a console experience until I moved with my dad. By that point, I wasted most of my money buying flavor of the month MMOs and League of Legends skins. So I missed a lot of games that people would classify as classics. That's where my collection started, from buying those games I missed as a kid, but also as an adult who has an appreciation for more than just Sonic the Hedgehog get anime of course like most collectors when they first start you buy a lot more than you play at certain times the small stack of gamecube games has grown to six more consoles and a wall full of games that are probably collecting dust i get paralyzed by choice i'm impulsive because i hate promising to do or be somewhere i'd rather just do what i want and do it when i want to do it but i want to play all these games i have i want to beat them all and that's probably not possible if i added every game i own into my backlog the total time to beat would probably give me a heart attack staring at the shelves of games takes me right back to when I was that dirty kid standing in GameStop covered in grass stains, gripping that 20 bucks I got from the neighbor, trying to figure out what game I could get with this. I could get this super popular game everybody knows, or this game with some anime dudes on the cover. I always chose the latter. Every day I do the same routine. I wake up, I clock into work, play a couple games of Yu-Gi-Oh before a meeting, make my coffee, hold off the thought of smoking a cigarette this early, clock out, and then play a game for an hour or two. I'm in this arc of my life that's pretty mundane from an outsider perspective. I'm married, I got the house, I got the collection I wanted. There isn't much that I require from life now. I'm content, though for some reason, there's a sense of dread I feel every time I scroll the internet. It's not in a comparative way because I honestly could give less of a shit what other people are doing, yet there's this everlasting feeling that I could be doing more. I could be making another one of these that you're watching, or I could be making another mix, or I could be working on this, or I could be working on that. I could be learning a new skill. I could be, it's, it's a fucking headache. And none of this shit really matters, does it? Video games for me aren't necessarily the escapes I used to treat it as. If the other Sony selects haven't expressed it enough, video games helped shape me into who I am today. Whether that was teaching me how to read from Pokemon and Zelda or inspiring me to learn new hobbies and interests, video games are sacred to me. The same way music is put on a higher pedestal for most people, my brain cannot look at anything gaming from just a linear lens. There's a social, political, emotional reasoning behind everything we consume and everyone's reaction is different to that same piece of art that's all based on your lived experience the heartbreaks the rage the laugh that only you have felt video games are a luxury too we don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a new doohickey to play some new game we don't need to spend 70 bucks every two weeks on the latest releases and we damn sure do not need the fear of missing out on buying that skin or emo and it's not necessary to log in every day or to play everything there are games on my shelf that i still have in the plastic on them from years ago and that i just haven't gotten around to there are games that i've played one time and never again for a long long time one phrase always annoyed me to hear i don't have time for this because like you're you're sitting here watching this video when you could be doing something you really want to do this phrase is especially prevalent no, hold on wait i know you're about to click off don't do that don't do that come back no 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 don't click off this phrase is especially prevalent in the gaming community i hear it all the time with mmos i have a family and a full-time job I only have an hour to play a night i don't have time for this which is a valid statement, but my issue comes from the second part that usually follows this statement. So this game should change to better fit my playstyle. It's weird that developers actually listen to that. It's why I fell out of love with the genre of MMOs, even though I stare like a wolf in the bushes for the chance to pounce on the next big MMO release. A massively multiplayer game should not cater to a single player. It's the antithesis of the genre. I mean, it's in the it's in the name, hello? It's weird because I often see what people want out of an MMO, and it's a lot of things that any other genre could do better. If you want stunning graphics and an immersive open world, you can play any AAA game nowadays. If you want action combat or deep RPG elements, you can play any of the 20 Souls likes that release weekly or 
once again any AAA game nowadays if you want emergent multiplayer gameplay you can play any live service game nowadays if you want progression that's damn near infinite and a rewarding in game you could play you get the gist of what i'm trying to say there's nothing mmos do better than any other genre other than one thing and that's organically creating social interaction all that can still be achieved in a quick hour spurts after work yet developers have slowly chiseled away that inconvenience in favor for dungeon queues repeatable chores like dailies instead of braving a new world and crafting adventures with the people you find along the way, you're now pretty much standing in an interactive lobby waiting for a cue to pop to play with other people. This has led to another problem, paying to skip the inconvenience. I don't have time to play 2K to grind my player to 99 overall, so I'll just pay an extra 100 bucks to skip that grind. I'm not gonna be able to finish this battle pass, so I'm gonna buy the levels and skip the rest of it. I wanna play this new expansion, but I don't wanna level a character to max, so I'll buy a level skip and a booster to get right into the action. This has bled outside from what I thought was an MMO exclusive problem to even single player games. When do we lose the thirst for adventure? When did everything become a min max spreadsheet of the most efficient way to enjoy the luxury that is gaming. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've seen other videos about backlogs or why gaming is dead or how to enjoy gaming again or whatever the hell. Like, yeah. Th that's the issue right there. There isn't an end all be all to enjoying something. There isn't a single tip you can make to make you enjoy something more than taking a step back and understanding yourself first and why you game in the first place. You don't even speak properly, nigga. You don't even breathe efficiently. So I try to play a game officially at the detriment of enjoyment. I'll tell you this because I did just this. Hey, come on, it's your birthday and I've got a new apartment. Let's take one day off from fucked up. Let's just sit here for a while, okay? If you love something, you make time for it. I take my wife out every Sunday just to be in each other's company. I DJ every Friday night until I'm too drunk to continue. But most of all, I game pretty much every day for an hour or two. Whether that was when I was playing Destiny 2 to catch up for the final shape or playing Toontown and the myriad of other MMOs while making the obscure MMOs videos, some of which I'm still playing in the background. Though the biggest thing I did last year was unplug from all the social media discourse, all the gaming news, from the YouTube videos, and I just sat on my couch and I played some video games. I can't lie to you and say that 2023 was a great year for me. In fact, it was incredibly shitty. Getting through that time, video games helped me out a lot. Some days I vegged out on the sofa for 10 hours on a Saturday, just doing nothing but playing games. Some days I played for four minutes and sat outside with a book for the rest of the day. Taking that extended sabbatical away from pretty much most of the internet for months made me reevaluate who I am as a gamer and what I don't and don't like about games. Did I just say don't and don't like? Which brought me to a weird conundrum. For a guy that hosts a podcast about playing video games, I didn't really play games all that much. At the start of 2023, I set out to actually beat my backlog. Though I failed, I learned a lot about how I enjoy playing games and what games in particular I like to play. I like going through games as a series instead of individually. That's kind of where this paralysis comes in. I can't play Dark Cloud 2 until I beat Dark Cloud 1. I like doing this to see how the development changes as new titles are made. I love going into depth about the development and reading old archive video game magazines and previews to see what might have been cut or changed from that final game. I think the hardest part of working on my backlog is that paralysis of choice. It's easy to buy a game or even get one for free nowadays, but it's hard to watch your collection grow and not be able to choose what to play. Seems like it would be a good thing to have more options for fun, but it's more so the anxiety to play everything I have a slight interest in that cripples me. It's so easy to just doom scroll Reddit and Twitter until I inevitably smack my teeth, then hop straight to YouTube and watch a two hour video about some shit I don't care about. But I could be spending that time doing something like playing an MMO or playing a new game. I don't tend to look at my backlog as a chore or a task I have to do. I'm very flexible with how and what I play. I will try anything. I'm open to most titles, mainly because if someone else can find some fun in it, I can at least attempt to understand why somebody would, then maybe I will too. The real struggle comes from remembering most of the games I played. Do you understand how hard it is to remember every game you played this year? Can you remember what you liked about that game you spent 47 hours on but didn't beat? What moments stuck out to you? The more I reflect on life, the more I try to understand how I think 
As a man trying to break generational curses and societal norms to better understand myself before I bring a mini me into this world has been one of those difficult tasks. I think a lot, but I don't say a lot. I found it easier to formulate what I'm feeling and thinking when you write it down. So I started a journal with this. I have this grandiose idea that eventually someone else will see this weird crate of beaten up journals and search through and find my thoughts on the dusty shelves of video games and vinyls and movies and take their own journey through the same pieces of art as I did. They could compare notes and see how I liked it. It's very narcissistic. I know, but regardless if someone reads it or not, I need to get it off my chest about how I feel about these games instead of just mindlessly consuming them. With me wanting to tackle my backlog, this journal has helped me start that path and it also made me reflect on more than just my backlog, but more on myself as a gamer and how I've come to approach and appreciate the art of video games. <laughs> Why do I have a backlog? What games do I have on this set backlog? Mostly try to quantify it by every game that you own or you haven't beaten or a select list of games that regardless of ownership you want to play before you die. That's a little extreme for my taste. If I die without playing the Marker Cree, I'm not screaming in the afterlife for a second chance. For me, a backlog is nothing more than a suggestive list of games I could play. What I've played and learned from these games has helped me better sift through my backlog to pick out and unfortunately add titles that might not be what I normally play but might allow me to experience something new and with that in mind hopefully i can start treating my back like more like a set of goals instead of a bunch of pixels i need to devour as the year flew by i started to feel a certain melancholy about slicing at this backlog this entire concept is new to me as a kid i just played whatever i wanted to play why is that so hard to do as an adult why do I have a backlog? I got to this certain burnout moment when I was playing through the last God of War game after going through the entire series. Why do I even have this list in the first place? Why don't I just play whatever piques my interest at the time? The most fun experience I had were from games I did not have on my backlog, so why do I still feel the need to use this system? You overhype yourself when you start planning on what games to play, and if you're like me, you start to research the game a little more to understand the development and build up this grand narrative before you even start playing. Giving it some kind of historical importance when at the time, the developers just wanted to make a good game. There's a certain kind of respect I give games, like I give albums or movies where I have to at least see it through to the end to give a full perspective about the game. Just like that third to last song on an album can be the best song on the whole project or the fight scene right before the final boss fight in the kung fu movie is the best fight what if i just haven't hit that part yet because i haven't played a lot of titles people would say are the greatest of all time or must plays i feel a more of an obligation to play some of these titles gatekeeping me from being good i'm i'm doing air quotes right here even when i'm recording this audio so bear with me true gamer but what if i don't want to what if I don't want to play a Mario game just because it's the biggest thing in the world? What if I don't want to play that old Atari game because it hasn't aged well, regardless if it's a classic? I've started to take recommendations seriously from people when they give it instead of just hitting them with it. Yeah, 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 that looks cool. I'll check it out. Xander Do Next, Cool Cool Tune, Prey, Baldur's Gate 3. These are some of the small set of games that were either recommended to me or not on my backlog that went on to be the best games I played all year or even all time. Looking back at my backlog and the games I've played, it was more fun to find new titles that interest me and play them blindly than the years of expectation built around backlog games. Even this video is kind of thrown into the backlog of sorts. From working on back of the rag and status check to trying to maintain my health through a very difficult year, I've reworked and put this video on the back burner so many times. I think the biggest thing that was holding me back was trying to find a definitive answer to this question that's been burning at me since I went on this grand quest to hack away at it. When I started writing, that was a simple answer to why I have a backlog. The simple list of suggestive games that I already own. But I wanted to play Hi-Fi Rush. I wanted to play Signalis. I want to play Orphan. I want to play Nino Kuni. But I don't feel this way about music or movies. I'll just listen or do whatever I want to at the time. Why is that so hard to do with gaming? And I think I finally have an answer for that. For a minute now, I've been in this limbo state. I feel lost, not because I don't know what to play or what to make a video on, but just on life. The end of the year is usually the hardest for me, just from a reflective mind state. I can't lie to you and say, 2024 was a way better year. I did so much. I plan to do even more this year. I'll be honest with you. 2024 was also a shitty ass year, but it's just something you gotta live with, you know? That's the show to all. I keep moving. I try to keep it simple. Listen, I didn't expect to play over 90 fucking games this year. I've had a lot of free time especially last year i did as well too i didn't expect like 
do anything else but play games. I didn't really watch a lot of movies or shows. I read a couple books, but I didn't really do much. The same went for this year. I was in the process of moving and traveled a lot because of that and work. So once I had too much time on my hand to game, I played series I never had before, like Castlevania, Mario. I explored genres I normally didn't think about, like shmups and beat em ups. I started playing those 8 bit and 16 bit games I glossed over for being too old. I've done so much and want to try so more. And I like, like, I want to try a blooper. I want to grab some graph paper and try out a map. I want to try out a grand strategy game and conquer the world. Maybe even play a visual novel or two. Even though I'm phasing out of my 20s into the officially unk status, I still feel like there's so much beyond the horizon. So now, two years after starting this script and this backlog journey, I once again ask myself, why do I have a backlog? The truth is, because I was stupid and blinded with choices placed upon me. I don't need to play anything. Everything is not meant for me. I have a wife, I have a family, a full-time job. I only have like an hour or two a, a night to play a game. I don't need to min-max my time, and I damn sure don't need to spend that money on that skin or dance. So what if I play this game so optimally? So what if I spend two weeks struggling to beat Vagrant Story? Who cares if I don't max out that battle pass or play that game during release, or even at all? As I grow older, I've come to learn that in this incredibly short time we have on Earth, in this privileged age that I can rant to you for this long about some bullshit like this, knowing like not knowing what game to play. I should just enjoy it as I see fit, when I see fit, and live life to the fullest. Whether that's... <laughs> I was going to make a joke about playing Giga Wings, because that's what I've been playing for the last like year. It's nothing but Giga Wing every night. Giga Wing, Giga Wing, Giga Wing. Trying to just get one TOP, just one CC. Just trying to do it every night consistently. And I, for the life of me, can't fucking do it. And it's very frustrating. So... I can't go to Giga Wing 2 until I beat Giga Wing. <laughs> Why do I have a backlog?